Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson Tonight, the show that is the sworn enemy of lying, pomposity, smugness, and groupthink. Time Magazine just reminded us it exists by naming President-elect Donald Trump as the person of the year. Fair enough. Hard to think of anyone more newsworthy this year than Donald Trump. But to many on the left, Time's cover was a reminder that Trump is indeed going to be president and was therefore a trigger. Here now is one person who felt that way, Aaron Cody. She's a Democrat and former congressional candidate from California. Aaron, thanks a lot for joining us tonight. Thanks for having so, me. The reason I want to talk to you was a tweet that you sent out after seeing the cover, I think, on the Today Show this morning. And you wrote this. Uh, Adolf Hitler was Times Man of the Year in 1938. Donald Trump is Times Man of the Year in 2016. Discuss. And I just saw the irony there because comparing someone to Hitler, of course, is not an invitation to discuss. It's the end of the discussion, isn't it? Well, I think that there are a lot of lessons that we can learn from the 1930s and Nazi Germany, not to say that this is the identical situation, but there's a lot to be gained from looking back how we cannot make the same mistakes of the past. Huh. So what kind of conversation, I mean, describe the discussion that you were trying to invoke by comparing Trump to Hitler. I think that it's very important that we are critical, that we do not normalize or sanitize the rhetoric or actions of Donald Trump or the ghastly appointees to his new administration. And I want people to remain vigilant. I want people to realize that none of this is normal. None of the hate speech, the hate crimes that are spiking in the United States. And we, as the American people, have to hold our president-elect accountable. Okay. So you, you've made a lot of pretty general statements. And by the way, I don't think there's any danger of Trump going uncriticized during his term as president. Um, well, but I think that something like he's... hearing the way oh, that oh, the media You just compared is... him to Hitler now. So, I mean, clearly there's you know, a vigorous conversation uh, about Trump underway, and you're part of it. But you said his yes. ghastly appointees. Give me an example. Today, you're talking about appointing a head of the EPA, someone right. who has sued the EPA on behalf of the coal industry and the coal huh. lobby. You're talking really? about putting a known anti-Semite. Who, who, who is that? Who, it also Pruitt. Who, the, who is that? The Attorney General Pruitt. Today. You, and what was the suit about? Do you know? Yeah, he was suing on behalf. It was a part of what the, the New York Times actually called a secretive alliance between energy uh -huh. firms, between state prosecutors, where he is Attorney General, and between uh, oil and gas companies. And okay. they... So let, let me just say this. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't sound like you know a ton about this. But he was one of 28 attorneys general. So the majority of states sued the Obama administration over its environmental regulations. So you can't just say he was acting on behalf of oil and gas companies. The majority of states were involved in that suit. He actually appropriated text out of a letter written by the oil and gas companies as his own. Right. So what about that did you disagree? In other words, so what you're doing here is you're quoting out of context of New York Times piece that says because he has the same views as an oil and gas company that they're illegitimate, but you're not actually making the case against him. And that, I guess, is what bothers me. I think there are a lot of cases to be made against Trump or his policies, and that's all totally legitimate. What is not legitimate and what does not lead to fruitful conversation or solutions is name calling, and that's what you're doing. I don't believe so. I think that someone who sues to remove protections that protect families, American families, from mercury, from arsenic, that protect our wetlands, that reduce the air pollution so that we can have a right to breathable air is not okay, name calling. Nobody is contesting a right to breathable air. I guess my point, just to say it again, is you don't actually know anything about what you're talking about, and you're throwing out a lot of allegations as if someone were against clean air or for mercury. Is there another side to he, the case? Do you understand he, their position or do you, does that not even interest you, learning what they think? It's not about learning what they think. It's about the fact oh. that this man, who is the head of the EPA, the nominee, has already acted on behalf of these very things about which we're speaking. He has sued to lessen the regulations from an environmental and public health standpoint. That which is fact. That's not negotiable. Regulations? Around well, air pollution? First of all, it's not, no, it's not, you can't name a single one. I think, no, I'm not, I'm I don't talking want to be about three now, but I think you, you studied the Department of no, Social no, 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 and no. Cultural Analysis at NYU. Did you, are, are you, do you have a degree in the hard sciences? I do have a degree in social and cultural analysis. I'm the proud co-founder no, of Turning but, Green, a nonprofit, that, and we've been working on environmental advocacy but since what's so January amazing 2005. Is that someone can start an environmental nonprofit with no science background. Do you think that's a little weird? 
No, I don't think that's a little weird. I think that there are a number of angles to come at this from. We partner with, and I'm proud to partner, a number of environmental organizations with sound scientists on their staff. 350.org, NRDC, came out today to absolutely categorically call out this man for being a climate denier. And, and maybe a climate denier. So anybody who disagrees with the received point of view that you espouse is not a legitimate no, 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 critic no. This or raising man questions. Is He's a, a denier of the He's fossil fuel industry. Okay. He is a puppet. Right. Yeah. I, I don't actually think you know anything about him or the suit, and I don't think you have the background to make those I claims. I can cite so three specific suits: real- wetland protection. <laughs> This, the air pollution and the toxins related to mercury and arsenic. What does that That's even mean? Things. The air pollution? What, what, what suit is that? What law to, was he contesting? He sued to reduce regulations around carbon pollution in the air. Okay. So all regulations are good, and anyone who challenges them is an accomplice to... Hitler's rise is a denier. I mean, what you're doing is No, these are conclusions to which you a, are arriving. No, actually, I'm not making the claim. I'm, I'm merely saying there's probably another side to the argument. You seem wholly ignorant of it and not interested in learning it. And instead, you are content with it. dismissing this guy as a moral criminal. And I'm saying that that's not the kind of conversation that leads to solutions. It's the kind that leads to demonizing other people. And that's bad. That's my point. Do you not accept that? Can you see what I'm talking about? I see what you're talking about, that name calling and hate speech and toxic rhetoric is how we've derived at this point. We have a president elect who has built a whole campaign cycle around it. You just compared this guy to Hitler, and then with a straight face, you're going to accuse him of engaging in hate speech. I mean, I'm sorry, I can barely hear the irony alarm is so loud in the background. I don't want to be cruel to you. This man, Donald Trump, has appointed as his chief strategist and top advisor, Steve Bannon. Are you going to tell me that Steve Bannon is not a white supremacist, is not an anti-Semite, that he is putting that very Uh ideology in the Oval Office? Yeah. All right. We got the hand gestures down, but the the argument uh, leaves something to be desired. Aaron, thanks a lot for joining us. I appreciate it. We've got a lot of big news today.